ACC Science, More Comprehension in Less Time, Part 2 of our presentation. This is Ken Boy, the owner of St. Louis Test Preparation. You'll see our email and our phone number listed there. We're a business that provides live tutoring and ACT test preparation in St. Louis and other cities. We also do live chat on the web. You'll see our website at the end of this presentation. This is Part 2 of our Science ACT Test Prep. And I mentioned in the first video that science is really about interpreting charts and graphs. So we have a chart here that I think is pretty easy to read and I'd like you to think about why. You can go back to this chart when you're on the next slide if you want. Well the numbers on the X and Y axis, the horizontal and the vertical, are spaced out properly. We can see them easily. We can see the numbers on both axes. Some ACT charts crowd information making them hard to read. The amount of information is limited. There's only about three, three or four pieces of information you need to look at. Some exam charts on the exam have so many more items to analyze on the x-axis that it's hard to tell them apart. It's too much information. The information is pushed too close together. And another big problem on the exam is, is that the ACT charts are not in color. So they have to use shading. They have to use hash marks, they have to use dots, they have to use different techniques in black and white to present the information to you and as a result the information is also hard to read. The prior slide was a chart, this is a table. Why is this table easy to read? So it says in the heading percentage of chemical in a solution, it shows you three experiments and two different types of solutions for each experiment. Think about that while we go to the next slide. Multiple experiments. Oftentimes the ACT uses simple tables, but they'll give you multiple examples of the same type of table. And students must notice which experiment the question is addressing. You have to read the question carefully. If the question asks about experiment two, make sure that you underline that on your test booklet so you know they're talking about example two, so that when you go back to the question itself, you pick up information on experiment two, not on experiment one or three. They often use similar looking charts and hope that you will misread the label. Too much information. The example table on the last slide is simple because the amount of information is limited. Just like the information on the table is limited, the information on the charts is limited. The more data listed in the chart, the more time it takes to read and analyze it, the longer it takes your eyes to focus on exactly what you need. Imagine if the chart had been seven experiments with five solutions. I think we'd all cringe when we saw that table. It's okay to skip. If you get a complicated chart, skip to the question with a simple chart or graph. The game with the ACT is to maximize your correct answers, work with the most difficult questions at the end. As we mentioned before, there's no color since the exam is not printed in color. The differences between the bars and the bar graph or the sections of pi and a pie chart are very difficult to distinguish, so you have to read carefully. The most difficult science questions are the hypothesis questions. They ask students to support or refute a hypothesis. For example, assume scientist A provides three reasons why the Earth is flat. Scientist B lists three reasons why the Earth is round. You're asked about both scientists A and B's views. The fact that the Earth isn't flat doesn't matter. You may have to support that argument when answering a test question. Only use the information that's provided in the ACT booklet and assume for test purposes that it's correct. Incorrect answers. I was a test item writer for the Certified Public Accountant exam, the CPA exam, for several years. The hardest task in writing test questions is coming up with creating three incorrect answers that seem plausible. By plausible, I mean an unprepared student might choose one of the incorrect answers, thinking it's correct. Since that task is difficult for the test item writer, we all get tired. There is usually one answer choice that the test item writer has written that you can throw out because it uses something I'll call an absolute. The test writer included an absolute because he was out of other ideas 
on how to fool you on exam questions. Since there are very few absolutes in life, you won't find many test questions on the ACT exam that are correct that have this type of absolute phrasing in it. Answer choices with words like always, never, absolutely, in other words, 100% one way or another, are usually incorrect. Flipping the booklet. Another frustration for students is flipping back and forth between a question page and an answer page. They're on opposite sides of the same piece of paper. Marking up the passage, physically writing on your test booklet, will save you time when you flip from the answer page to the text. This is a bibliography of some of the choices and some of the sources we use to create the ACT science video. You can find these on the web. A lot of them have to do with active reading. That's the end of part two. You'll find uh, part three and others on YouTube. If you'd like live tutoring not only in St. Louis but other cities in the Midwest, you can go to www.stltest.net and our email and our phone number are also listed. And thanks very much.